Sandia National Labs Tribal Energy Program was founded to support the development of renewable energy projects on tribal lands and support the economic development of indigenous communities. Sponsored by the Department of Energy's Office of Indian Energy, the Tribal Energy Program provides technical assistance for renewable energy projects and gives Native American students the opportunity to work directly with tribal stakeholders through the internship program. Sandia Labs has worked with many tribes across the country. My objective working with tribal nations is to further their energy goals. At Sandia National Labs, we have an internship program for American Indian students in STEM. Tribal members that come to work with us are from all different tribes across the United States, including an Alaska Native. I bring the students out to projects where it's possible that they do some technical assistance work, but it's really based on the academic background that the student brings to the job. As part of the program, interns visit select sites each year to directly review the installations and gain insight into the successes and lessons learned for each project. Two of the projects that I've chosen to highlight as successes is the Campo Cumie wind farm and the Agua Caliente solar installation. I chose these two projects because they're very different in the approach, very different in the tribe, two different technologies and they've been fielded and working for at least 15 years. The Kumie Wind Farm is a project that was done early on in renewable energy development on tribal lands. The tribe chose to put in land leases for each of the turbines. They partnered with a private company so that a tribe receives um, not only the land lease, but royalties from the power purchase agreement. They sell their power to the San Diego area. They have such wonderful wind resources that it was a natural for the tribe to put in wind turbines. There was a lot of consideration that went into it long before we actually built the project. Uh, it originally started when we were approached by Kinetech Wind Power back in the early 90s. And they came to the reservation and they said, you know, hey, you guys have a great resource here. Uh, can we put up some, some wind monitors and test it out? And, and it really looked like something that we could actually gain revenue off of. So we went through a period of discussion with the tribal members. And so when it finally came, came down to it, the, the company asked us if we'd like to host all the 25 wind turbines and so it really sustained the tribe and uh, during the Great Recession when our casino revenues really tanked, uh, a big part of the tribal revenues were coming off of this wind farm. You take all of these challenges for a major wind farm and they have the elements that made it successful. One, you've got a wonderful wind resource. Second, you have transmission available to bring the power from the wind turbine into a metropolitan area. And you have a major freeway, because if you're gonna install a wind turbine, you need freeway access for all of the equipment to go in. Well, Kumeyaay is very proud to be partnered with San Diego City and California State to meet initiatives of zero carbon uh, by the year 2040. Uh, I like talking to the young people and uh, steer them towards you know, careers in renewable energy. It's a very wonderful career to be in, a very fulfilling career. We're helping the communities around us. This wind project brought to light a lot of things that we wanted to see in a follow-on project. And so we're looking at a, you know, a lot of different things that tie in and, and they all kind of tree off more or less from the experiences that we've had with this, this initial project. The Agua Caliente tribe is more in an urban setting, and yet they have their traditional trading post. The uh, trading post project is highly successful because it shows the tribe had a philosophy to not ruin the natural vistas of the canyon and the uh, oasis that's on the tribal lands. Instead of putting power poles and lines, they chose to put in an off-grid system. In early 2000s, this building was powered by a propane generator that was uh, 15 kilowatts. Kind of oversized for the building, but uh, it, it did its job. Uh, problem is it needed to run during the all hours of operation, even if you just had a light bulb on. So it was very 
inefficient. So we started looking at options to come up with a different solution. In working with our tribal council and membership, they early on recognized the value of the resource in the canyon. Obviously, um, through the land planning, the work to preserve this area. This is the original home of the Agua Cayente Band of Cahuilla Indians. And the clans feel that this is a very, very important area here. So linking the, the tradition, the legacy, the culture, the heritage with a way to improve that and create sustainability moving, moving into the future was a real linchpin for our, our tribal membership. They got it immediately. We did an audit of the building trying to figure out the power. We did our best to try and figure out what was the consumption and, 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 and came up with the idea that, that solar was the right path from a, just a maintenance and a practicality standpoint. This is a huge learning curve we had to get to. And that, is, that means something, that's significant. You can't ignore that. Off-grid systems were very rare. Um, there was not much out there. Um, it took the consultant we hired uh, quite a bit of time uh, to come up with an idea, a solution that would work. And even then, implementation was a bit rocky. So it took a couple months to actually get it fully operational. But once it, once it was, it, it, it's worked well ever since. So. so this is one bank, and that's the other bank. So those are in series. These are in series, so combined voltage is two strings of 48 volts. Well, it's one thing to read the information through journals or reports or participate in conferences. It's a whole other thing to come out, look, touch, feel, and see the real context and the hurdles to overcome to make things like this happen. My hope for the interns is for them to be leaders in clean energy leaders in sustainable development, leaders in renewable energy projects. I would have really liked this when I was young. And, you know, if I, if I had been able to see how I could be an engineer, be a scientist, and, and, and still contribute to my community and contribute both to the economic base and to the, the safety and health of, of, of the people in my community. And so I think as indigenous people, it gives us an opportunity to, to be contributors to, to the solution. I've always been interested in renewable energy, but um, this internship program has really given me a sense of purpose in what I want to do. Getting to see some of these projects that I've been reading about for years was really cool. Um, and getting to learn some of the reasons why um, tribes decide to pursue renewable energy. I think what I've learned so far from these visits is that each project is really uh, individualized. I found that it's been really important to see it in real life and see what these challenges are and be an active listener to the tribes and, and understand what's going on. It's really the people at the tribal administration, the leaders, the project managers, that can tell you what actually happened to get these projects in the ground. And so I think that's a part of the success is having access to people such as this. It's had a, a great impact, uh, especially for younger members that maybe have the linkage to the past and, the, and the, the history of this area through their families and the clans. And then also, you know, they're looking forward and that future, that linking that future, this gives hope that there is a way to get there, um, that there is something that it's not external, but internal to the tribe that we can do to make our reservation, our reservation environment better. There's a lot to doing a tribal project. It's not easy, but it can be done. And I hope that we instill persistence in what they want to pursue. Even though the challenges are hard, the work is so important for Indian country.